what we have here is uh, the starter, which I mixed last night with about uh, two cups of milk and two cups of flour. The proportions are not that critical. Um, and so it's risen overnight. And this is the most critical part of the whole operation. I'm going to stir it down some. You see how it's risen. It's all kind of bubbly. And I'm going to take some of it and save it for next time. The organisms that are in it, basically it's milk, flour, and then some little ecosystem of yeasts and bacteria, and I have no idea what particular ones are in this starter. Um, and we've, it's been in our family for about 70 years or so, and so it's probably evolved over that period of time. I don't know, but it still works, and yeah, it's long-lived and very robust. So at this point, I'm going to make some pancakes. Uh, you can do anything you want with this uh, material now uh, because you've saved the starter. So you could make bread with it. I'm going to make pancakes. You could experiment. Personally, I know that when I was uh, 10, 12 years old, my mother had some of this starter that she had obtained from her mother, and that's what we ha we'd have pancakes maybe every week or so. And that's basically all that she did with it. She didn't make bread or anything like that. And I'm going to mix that all in there. My grandparents obtained it apparently from a neighbor when they lived in California. Uh, this was back in the 40s. And the story was that it was originally from the Alaska Gold Rush. Um, the miners would have a batch of sourdough and they would keep it in a pouch under their coat against their stomach, you know, to keep it warm and, and they would make bread out of it. Um, I have no idea if that's true, but supposedly this dates back to the Alaska Gold Rush. And we're going to wait until the frying pan gets good and hot. Certainly it could be a, a family tradition. Somebody could get the starter from me or they could start their own. Um, as I mentioned, for the water-based starters or even a milk-based, you can just leave your batter out for a couple of days. But then that's kind of hit or miss. You're not quite sure what you're going to get in there. Um, you can obtain a, an established starter from someone and then just keep it going. My personal attachment is that it has been in the family for so long that once it gets to a certain age, you think, boy, I don't want to be the one who loses this. And so that pancake is done. I like the pancakes, and actually the longer you let it sit out, um, not refrigerated, the more sour they get, and actually the better they get. And uh, I like to be able to tell people it's, it's a long history in the family, and as I said before, I like to distribute it as widely as possible. But I think once it gets to a certain age, you just don't want to be the one who lets it die off. Basically every year we put out a call for exhibitors, and we do that typically a couple months before the event. We hope that we will have more home fermentation folks than business fermentation folks, and that always works out. And the public could come and taste things and have a good time.